if you've watched the channel for a little bit, you've noticed that I've been doing some 3D printer reviews. Uh, I started out with the CR10, the regular version of the CR10 right here. Then I moved on to the CR10 S4, which is the larger version. I did a review of that uh, not too long ago. But Gearbest recently sent me something even bigger, which is this, the CR10 S5. Now this has a 500 millimeter cubed build volume, or 20 inches cubed. And that's pretty darn huge, and that's a bit of a problem, actually, in terms of figuring out where to put the printer. Uh, I have it here on the bottom of this large workbench, and uh, it barely fits even put sideways like this. And even to get it this way, I had to rearrange some things. I had to put the control box sort of at the, the top. It's over at the left, but the top of the printer. Uh, but that normally uh, is not even possible because you don't have quite long enough cables, so uh, I had to get some extension cables, and, you know, that worked fine, but uh, if you want to get one of these printers, you will have to take into account the uh, the actual size of the thing. If you had a very large table, like a, a kitchen table, you could maybe put that on there, uh, but otherwise, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, one thing I didn't realize when I was sort of arranging this whole thing with the control box on the left and everything is that uh, you still have to have the filament coming in the side of the machine, basically. So at the moment, I have uh, a spool holder just sort of uh, sitting on the floor here, as you can see, and it's feeding the filament into the side of the machine. This is not ideal by any means. I'm going to keep thinking and, and maybe come up with a better solution for this, but this is what I have at the moment. So anyway, I've had the printer for about a week and a half, and I've been putting it through its paces, but I'm not anywhere near being able to make a final review. So I am I just thought I would give you a first look at what I've been doing, and maybe get some feedback from you in terms of what you might want to see me print. I do have a couple of ideas for some cool projects to do with this machine, but they will take uh, quite a while, so... Uh, I just thought I would go ahead and get this out there because I've had some people asking about this printer. As I said, this is not a full review just yet, but I did want to say a couple of things about the construction of this machine. This machine is very similar to the other CR10 models in terms of its uh, capabilities and its, you know, hot end and control box and all of that are more or less identical. However, it is different in terms of the heated bed, both in terms of its size and its design. So I'd like to talk about that just a little bit. It, it uses a large aluminum heat bed that goes back and forth on rollers. Here you can see the bottom of it. And it is a heated bed, and it doesn't actually take that long to heat up. Uh, the S4, which I reviewed earlier, I mentioned took about 20-some minutes to get to 60 degrees centigrade, while this one only takes uh, 6 or 7 minutes, and that might sound good, but <laughs> that's until you realize that the heater under the bed actually does not uh, fill the entire space of the bed. It only is the same size heater as on the original CR10, so it looks about like this. And that's a bit of an odd choice to me. Um, I don't entirely know, for me, if it's going to be uh, an issue. I only print in PLA personally, so it's not super critical to have a heated bed at all, but for some people it might be. Now you can get an aftermarket heater for this that is much more powerful and that covers the entire bed, but that's a significant expense. The other models of CR10 that I have have just uh, cables that go directly into the heat bed with solder, and that's kind of fragile, so one of the first mods that I've been doing is to print a strain relief bracket and put it on there. This one actually comes with a strain relief bracket of sorts, already installed from the factory. It's got a plastic uh, kind of bracket and a zip tie that goes around the cable to keep it from uh, being strained quite as much. It's not an ideal thing though because the cable still hangs down as you can see here. So I would probably print one that makes it uh, up and out of the way. But still it's nice that they included something. Finally, the adjustment knobs for the heated bed are actually pretty hard to reach. They're way under here. Uh, you can see that thing sticking out there is the knob, and makes it difficult to adjust, and all, especially if you want to do live adjustments, as I sometimes do at the start of a print, just sort of tweaking it a little bit. So in that sense, leveling is harder than with the other CR10s, but I have found that it doesn't get out of level nearly as easily as the other CR10s. You can see, I don't know, you can barely make out the spring there. 
It is way smaller than the spring on the C uh, 10s 4 as you can see here. It's like a fifth of the size, and it's much more compressed, I think. So the very first thing I tried printing was this little Java Idle. I like it because it prints without any support, and it prints quickly. It's kind of my benchy, if you will. And I think this printed just fine. It's uh, 0.24 millimeter layer height, I believe. So it's not the finest that this printer can do. Uh, this is also at that layer height. It's an owl, if you couldn't tell. Uh, quite a nice model. Came out really well, I think. These are just tests using the included white filament. Um, you know, it's got these little bumps on the back. That, that's where the layers are starting. Uh, maybe I can figure out a way to sort of ameliorate that. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I did have a little bit of... Uh, drooping there. There's some overhangs in this model that are a little severe, so I did get a little drooping. In fact, I trimmed a few of those off. So after making sure that the printer was working properly with those test prints, I decided to jump right in and do something that would fill basically the entire bed, and that is this Stranger Things logo. It was, of course, uh, the second season recently was released, so I thought it was appropriate. I apparently forgot to take any video of this being printed, but here is a photo. You can see my extremely sophisticated cardboard box holding up the control box before I was uh, able to get the extension cables. And it printed just fine. I used glue on the bed, and uh, it seemed like not having the heater under the entire bed was not really an issue for this. In fact, it was a little tricky to get off. I did paint the little connecting pieces here so that they wouldn't stand out quite as much. And if you put it up against a black background, it looks really cool. I believe that took a little over a day to print, so I decided to go big with my next one and went ahead and made a giant version of my Java Idol as I like to do. I know I say this just about every time I review one of these things, but this is by far the biggest thing I've ever printed, and my goodness, it's quite impressive actually. I'm going to do a little comparison between the ones I've printed on each of these machines to give you an idea of the build volume. So from left to right we have the regular CR10, the candy corn look is just because I ran out of orange part way through, the CR10 S4 in the middle, and then the CR10 S5 on the right. And it's difficult to convey the size in person, but let me just say it is gigantic and I'm very impressed with it. This took about 80 hours to print, so a little over three days, and it's completely hollow as you can see, just like all the other Javas that I've printed. So, you know, if you want to do something that is this big and not hollow, it's going to just take a really long time. Still, it uh, printed basically perfectly, as far as I could tell. When I was slicing this, I did make the shell a bit thicker than I had on the other Jabba's, just because I knew if I was scaling it up this much, I'd want to make it nice and sturdy. I printed this in uh, Maker Geeks translucent green, which is a pretty cool color. I did have to uh, change the filament part way through. You can see there's a line right here. And uh, I'm not really sure why that is. The settings and everything are the same. So I assume that the uh, first spool of filament I got maybe had slightly different coloration than the other spool. I'm not sure. The filament detection did work properly, so it stopped the print or paused it when it ran out of the first spool and then I was able to change it no problem so all in all uh, this was a big success oh by the way this looks really cool with a light behind it too so I wanted to try something else large and so I used the same filament to do, uh, make this vase that fills up the entire build volume the vertical build volume of the printer uh, it uses vase mode so it goes all the way around and around in one single extrusion and uh, that means that they're relatively fast, but they're also pretty flimsy prints. I don't really like vase mode that much for that reason, but they do uh, make fast and attractive uh, models. Looking down inside the vase is particularly mesmerizing. In this case, uh, because I'm using just the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle, that's how thick the walls of this print are. And, you know, if you look at it here, yeah, it's, it's quite flimsy. It did uh, turn out pretty well, although if you look on some of the uh, sections here, 
the individual layers didn't quite bond together. You can see there's some space between there. And I think this is just a limitation of vase mode being printed at this size and with these angles and with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's not really the printer's fault, I don't think. The other sections of the print did turn out just fine though, so maybe it's this angle that's the problem. So I wanted to try something else that would fill up most of the vertical build volume of this printer, so I chose this uh, Eiffel Tower model that I've seen a lot of people print. It took about, I think, 50 hours to print this. It doesn't use any supports. I'll have to say this is actually a pretty fun model to watch printing just because of the way it kind of takes shape over time, uh, literally being built before your eyes. I printed this at the roughest layer height I could, 0.32 millimeters, so you can see the layers are relatively thick. I didn't want this to take too long. It came out okay, uh, pretty good, I guess I should say, but there are some issues with the quality of the print. It looks pretty impressive from a short distance away, like a foot or two away, but there's some drooping, as you can see, underneath these arches. And if we uh, look even closer, you can see that there's some stringing and sort of general roughness in some of these areas. And I know, I mean, I've seen people who have printed this on the CR-10 and gotten better results than this. So I'm fairly confident that if I change some settings like my retraction to get rid of the stringing, I can uh, do a better job of printing this, but I don't have time to do it just yet. I think maybe I'll revisit this later. I was impressed that the railings here came out uh, pretty nice, even though they're quite small. I will say that I didn't see any obvious quality issues going up higher in the model as I thought there might be, because you get some sort of swaying uh, as you get higher and higher with this moving bed, but uh, it seems just fine. Finally, I wanted to try something with a lower layer height, so it'd be very smooth and high detail and uh, so I tried this Aria Dragon at 0.12 millimeter layer height and this is nearly flawless I would say there's barely any hint of layer lines even if you look closely and uh, the quality is extremely high I think this took about four or five hours to print something along those lines and it's been designed, this model, to print without any supports. I didn't get a chance to print any models that do require supports. That's one thing I do want to try. But yeah, I was quite impressed. You can see how smooth that is. And the only real defect that I can find is on the horn here. It got a little blob where the nozzle stayed there too long, I guess. But otherwise, it's pretty much perfect. So. If you were wondering if this large printer can handle smaller, more detailed prints, I think you have your answer. As I said, I'm calling this a first look and not a review because I've only had it for a short time and I don't really feel comfortable making a final review just yet, but from what I can see, it doesn't seem to have any differences really between uh, this and the other CR10 models in terms of quality. Uh, the main difference is the size of the bed and of course the fact that the bed is not heated across the entire surface. The, uh, the size of the printer of course is also an issue so finding a place for it can be a challenge. And of course it's also the most expensive member of the CR10 family. If you're trying to decide between this and the other models I would say if you really need a build volume this big there's nothing wrong with going for this model. If you're just wanting a 3D printer and you thought having the biggest one would be cool, you might want to look at the other models first and make sure you really need a printer this big. But based on what I've seen so far, it seems quite good. GearBest has given me a number of coupons for all of the CR10 models, so if you're interested in any of them, you can check out the affiliate links below. I understand that November 11th is kind of a big deal in China. It's kind of like their Black Friday, and they have a lot of sales and things going on, so uh, GearBest is also doing some sales on 3D printers and other supplies and things like that, so you could take a look at that as well. So as I said, I'm going to continue working on this printer, have a few projects in mind, but if you have anything you might want to see me print, I can't make any promises, but you know, you could make a suggestion in the comments, or if you have any questions about the printer, I'd be happy to answer them if I can. Thanks for watching!